Welcome back into the Homegrown Horror Hour, ladies and gentlemen. Joining me this week, Gertie and Elliot of the Spooky Family. Hey, how how's it going? Right. How are y'all doing today? We're doing pretty good. It's, you know, it's the spooky season. That's our season. Woo-hoo. So we're, we're at full power, I guess, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say so, man. It, it's it's weird that it's already Halloween. That's something me and Gertie were talking about earlier. We're already halfway through October. Weird feeling. Well, it's it's Halloween on the outside, but if you go into any store, it's almost Valentine's Day. I'm pretty sure. Like, <laughs> I don't understand. This is the first year that I've been into like department stores on October 1st, and they already have the Christmas stuff out, and there's hardly any Halloween stuff to be found. And it's, yeah. it's freaking me out. I was seeing Halloween stuff during the summertime, man. It's They just really jumped the gun here lately. They they have before, but now they have really done it. Yeah, it's it's an amazing thing. Like I don't know, I I just would like to have my holidays one at a time, please. You know, what what's y'all's second favorite holiday? I know Halloween is of course number one, but it's like being the spooky people that you are. Do you still like another holiday like St. Patrick's Day or Leif Erikson Day? I like your answer. I like Christmas. I like Christmas. We have young, we have young spooky children, mm-hmm. so they enjoy the Christmas season, and I enjoy it through them. So, I but it. Halloween is number one. So, I, I just want to point out that Krampus is during Christmas. So you know, <laughs> Christmas for sure. It's kind of like Halloween and Christmas at the same time. Not a lot of people know about the whole Krampus story. No, they don't. And you know what? You know what's really weird uh, is the most famous ghost story happens during Christmas. I mean, are you, are you story, talking about the uh, uh, Scrooge story? Yeah. Kind of yeah, brain dead right now. Everybody yeah. knows. Everybody knows that story, and it's a Christmas story, but it's a ghost story. So, yeah, figure that one out. Yeah, kind of like how Die Hard is a Christmas movie too. You know. Yes, exactly. And Gremlins. And Batman True. Returns, and yeah, all those. Lethal Weapon. Um, lethal Weapon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Forgot about Lethal Weapon. Oh. Yeah. But, you know, it's, I like the crossovers. You know, they, they didn't, didn't they make a Krampus movie, too, a few years they ago? Did. Yeah, they did. They do did. You, do you remember the Killer Santa Claus movie with Bill Goldberg? Uh, what was it, Christmas Sleigh? Yes. Was, yes. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. Slay. Something like that. Close. Close enough. <laughs> it, it is what it is. Yeah. They, that was. Yeah. There. And then there was Silent Night, Deadly Night, and uh, all kinds of stuff. So. Yeah. Black Christmas. <laughs> Black Christmas. Yeah. Mm, I remember hearing about that one. I don't think that I ever seen it. What was Black uh, Christmas about? Uh, serial killer yeah. Santa Claus. So yeah. And there's an old one, and then there's a remake. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. everything's a remake of a remake nowadays. Did y'all see where they're remaking Home Alone? Yeah, I saw that today. Yeah, with a British kid. Yeah. That's not allowed. That is vetoed. It's so uh, bad. Like somebody out there maybe likes it, but I didn't see any. Like in every comment thread that I was reading, whenever it come to that little trailer they released today. Yeah, nobody's going to watch that movie. It's just, I don't see why you mess with the classic. There's only two Home Alones. Yeah, the, the, they, they made that third one, I remember, but it wasn't, wasn't the same. It doesn't exist. Only two. <laughs> I, you know, I liked the crazy pigeon lady in number two. I thought she was pretty cool. I enjoyed her. She, she was, it, but I was sitting there watching the trailer thinking like, oh, maybe some of them are going to make a guest appearance, but I didn't see any of them. And like you were saying, they're British and, and, and the robbers are like nice people who don't want to rob. It's a really weird concept. And I just, no, the, 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 wet bandits. the sticky bandits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're the wet bandits, Marv. It's it's a weird time to be alive. Like they're coming out with a new Halloween movie this year. Are y'all excited about that one? I am. Gertie's not. <laughs> Why aren't you I'm excited sorry. about it? I like I like the originals. 
Yeah. What did you think about the Rob Zombie remakes? <laughs> we, we have talked about this. So it seems like this that, that's like our theme. I love Rob Zombie. I just, so, some of it is just, I can't get into it. Yeah. Just kind of, kind of odd and cringy. I don't know. I just didn't like it. But I love Devil's Rejects is one of my favorite movies. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. But I just didn't. I didn't like the. I didn't like the newer Rob Zombie Halloween's. He Hopefully. lost me with the. He lost <laughs> me with the the uh, mystical horse in part two. Yeah, that's what lost me. You know, I, part one's okay. What, what's hard to understand is mother is leading it down a hallway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> can't you get it? Well, like like how y'all were talking about Stephen King on y'all's last podcast about how he got through the seventies. Maybe Rob Zombie had something like that going on with that part too. I don't know. He just couldn't have been too sober when he was making that. I, I've got a feeling you may be right. But it's, yeah, it's I, hard. It's hard to dig through the ditches and burn through the witches, though. You know, I mean, that's that's hard work. It so. takes a toll on a man. It, it does. does, and yes. you know, it's true. I guess, especially if you're not, you know, in the back of your Dracula. You know, I mean, that's that's a rough one. I just don't see like how they're going to end these franchises one day. Do you think like the scary movies like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween, uh, Scream, all those, like the the huge franchises, do you think like it'll ever end one day when somebody's just going to say like, we're never going to make another one? I don't think it'll ever end. Yeah. Today, I think think Scream 5, uh, the trailer dropped today. That looks good. It did. Yeah, they go back to the original Scream House. Yeah, um, the but I think, house. yeah, I think those, uh, I, I think those slasher movies are just so easy and cheap to make. And yeah. like, you know, why wouldn't you? And then they've got a built-in audience. Everybody knows who Jason is. Everybody knows who Freddy is. Everybody knows who Michael Myers is. You know, and the, even if they don't, you know, break records, they're still going to make money. So it's, yep. it's going to be out there. Yeah, Hollywood, whenever they get a good character like that, they will milk it for everything they can. I mean, Jigsaw in the Saw movies, there's 40 of them in two years. I don't even know. Like, I can't even keep up. I don't know which one yeah, which. And then they done that weird thing last year with the, uh, what they call that one, Spiral or something like that? It was yeah. the one with Chris Rock in it. Yeah, the Chris Rock movie that it was in the same universe, but not the same I don't even know. That was, but yeah, that was Chris Rock in it. Yeah, who was I? Chris Rock Uh, takes on Saw. (laughs) Yeah, it was crazy. Is is this like Uh, uh, Lieutenant Butters from uh, Back to Lethal Weapon, like four? (laughs) 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 I believe (laughs) it's just a weird time to be alive. It is. It's a strange, strange world we live in right now. You know, we're we're fed nostalgia constantly. Yeah, it is going. Every once in a while, you'll get a good scary movie nowadays. The the last like really good scary movie I watched was this one called Lights Out. Do y'all remember that one? It was like 2015, 16, something like that. If y'all haven't watched that one, I would suggest checking it out. That is a dang good movie. Is that the one where they break into the house and there's a blind guy living in there? No, no, no. I think that's a... Uh, oh, what is that one called? But they have to be quiet. I forget what okay. that one's called, but I know what you're talking about. The guy looks like Bill Ingvall, or did Bill Ingvall yeah. star in that? <laughs> no. Yeah, I know who you're talking It's the guy from Avatar. I can't... Here's yeah. your knife. Um, but... <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah, it's the bad guy from Avatar. Yeah. The yeah. general hey. from Avatar. I guess. But definitely Bill Ingvall's doppelganger. For sure. It's a fun word to use, by the way. Doppelganger. It is. By the way, can I just go ahead and say that we are not worthy to be on your show? Uh, of you course you are. You interviewed the man, the myth, the legend. You interviewed Alice Cooper, the, the king of Halloween. And now you, you're having new not like, worthy. Yeah, We're not exactly. Worthy. <laughs> We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Nah, man. I... I you know, it, to me, everybody is equal. I, I hate, I hate people's mentality whenever they think they're better than somebody or anything like that. To me, everybody puts on their pants the same way. 
I, I just, I love talking with everybody. Some of the best conversations that I've ever had in my life is with people that, you know, nobody really knows them. Maybe they don't even have a lot of family and friends to talk to, but it's just amazing. Some of the people that you meet and sometimes you get to talk with these big celebrities and you think that they're going to be these amazing, nice people. And then they're not. So we, we have had that experience a couple of times (laughs) actually. Yeah. Yeah. it, It sucks. So to me, everybody's equal, man. But Alice Cooper, Alice Cooper was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, for sure. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, and his his, uh, show was awesome, too. That man is just a heck of a performer. There's not many artists that will put on a show nowadays. Everybody just sings into the microphone, walks around a little bit, then goes back home. I guess I hope that artists, the bigger artists getting into music right now, kind of keeps that concert feeling whenever like you go there not just to hear a band play but to see them put on a show we're kind of losing that when it gets to music i think absolutely the last couple of concerts we've went to have been okay i think the last big production we went to was uh well rob zombie and uh what that was, was it that, that was, was a great, great concert yeah uh, did you go see uh him and marilyn manson and huntington no <laughs> okay, I thought I thought that was the show you were talking about. We went a long time ago to Louisville and watched him. Mm. Yeah, when he was at Louisville. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was the headliner. Um, uh, he was with uh, like Bell Bribes and him. Yeah. And all there was the people that did the uh, um, like the rockabilly spook show stuff. Can't oh, think of Captain Clegg, maybe is that it? Yes, Captain, Captain Clegg. Yeah, 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 that's them. Yep. Yep. Sure. I, I love Rob Zombie's music and I love his movies, most of them for the, the most part. To me, House of 1000 Corpses, like whenever I was a little kid, I watched that and it freaked me out. Like I'd seen scary movies before, but that's just a disturbing movie. Like I'm not even sure if that's scary. That's just straight disturbing. Yeah. yeah. And, and like I said, I, I'm a huge fan of his music, but I read this one article a few years ago where they built like a skate park near his house or something like that or he moved near a skate park and he called a like he uh, called the cops basically on the skate park he was saying that they were being too loud rob zombie saying that somebody is being too loud i'm like dude what for real it just it kind of made me lose a little bit of respect like i i still love thunder kiss 1965 but I just think to the skate park. I'm like, you're not really that rock and roll Rob Zombie. No, that's, I mean, come on, let those kids have fun. It's just him of all people. But, you know, some of these people just, they put on an act, you know. Same thing like going back to Alice Cooper. He's a born again Christian who loves golf. Mm-hmm. But he cuts his head off on stage in front of thousands of people, too. So. Can you can you think of anything scarier than golf though? I mean, honestly, when you think about it. True, yeah. but so so the spooky family. How did y'all start y'all's podcast? Well, <laughs> I mean, for the first first of all, we really are a family. I mean, Gertie and I have been married for uh, quite a while now. Uh, yeah, that was a, that was a committed response. Yeah, <laughs> you while. better start remembering that number there, Ellie. <laughs> It's been 12 years, 12 years, (laughs) and uh, her brother is uh, on the show too. He he couldn't be with us tonight, but her her brother is on the show too as Beagle. And uh, we just, we, you know, during the whole thing that this bad stuff that's happened the last two years, we just never really had a chance to get together and talk. And whenever we get together, we just like to try to make each other laugh. We, We like to talk about, and like, I'll go ahead and be the first person to tell you, I'm not a funny person. But Gertie and, and, and Beagle are hilarious. Like, they just crack me up. So uh, I, had, I had started on Here to Chew Bubblegum with Goose and Cronkite back in the day. And I was doing Elliot's articles. And uh, Gertie was like, why are you always researching and recording stuff for, for a podcast? And I was like, it's fun. And she's like, there's no way that is fun. So one day she was off work you know beagle was off work and i said well won't you record with me 
So they came and record, you know, recorded a little bit with me, and they were like, "Man, that was that was actually fun. That was kind of, you know, we we got into it." So I talked to Goose, and I said, "Goose, man, I hate to I hate to, you know, do this, but I think we're gonna have to like." branch off and become another you know do another podcast and he was very very like happy and helpful and he he you know showed us what to do and showed us where to go and the spooky family was born and the one thing that we love uh that is is the most common with us is scary stuff like we absolutely love you know any kind of horror and 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 aliens and you know big we're the kind of people that like you know, be hanging out like that. It could be Christmas, Christmas Eve or something, and we're all in a house together, and then somebody gets the remote and YouTube's on. But let me show you this paranormal footage I found the other day. Do you think it's real? What do you think about this? I'm getting ready to scare you to death. I'm going to show you this. So we like try to one up each other. Yeah. Yeah. And, and John kinds of stuff like that. And we just, and we're always trying to make fun of it too. I, I don't know if that's a defense mechanism that we're, you know, we're not, we're, but we always do. We and uh, we do, we make fun of all kinds of stuff. And then, so we just, we wanted to take a, you know, it's our tagline, but we wanted to take a lighter look at the darker side of the world. So we made the Spooky Family Podcast. That's cool, man. And so, so we're both of y'all like into paranormal spooky stuff whenever you first got together or is that like something that the other one was into and kind of dragged the other one down that rabbit hole how did that start i i when i first met gertie i never wanted her to know that i like that stuff because i was like man i she'll she'll think i'm weird she'll think you know she's like oh you were look, big into crazy. aliens you were aliens, you're, 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 yeah. aliens is what you brought to the relationship i br- yes i brought and aliens then, to the relationship I brought like Southern Gothic horror, occultism, strange, Hollywood, weird stories. A- everything else besides I am, basically. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so, so what she's saying is I didn't bring much to the relationship, and I agree with her. I, it was it was pretty much all dirty. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and from there, you know, we started going to some conventions, and we started, you know, watching different shows and. Uh, we we started listening to the podcasts that were you know out there in the world and uh, it just grew from there that's cool so, so is there a topic that you kind of like a little bit more than others see whenever it comes to me like conspiracy theories I kind of jump like aliens will be my focus for a little while and then I'll get into the occult and then I might get into whatever like is there something that you like a little bit more or do you kind of jump around what do you think, Gertie? You you answer that one, and then I'll I've got an answer, but I want to hear yours first. Okay. Well, um, I always just like old Hollywood stories, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I, like, like, do you mean like celebrities, like with the occult, like some eyes wide shut yeah. type stuff? Yeah, eyes wide shut type stuff. Uh, the Black Dahlia. Yeah. Black Dahlia. Yeah. Um, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, Laurel Canyon in general. If you were to ever look up stuff about Laurel Canyon. I've never heard of Laurel, Laurel Canyon. Oh, you should look up get, something about that. That's where the get, Manson Brothers took place. Oh, get okay. ready, Get yeah. ready to go down a rabbit hole. I think Jared Leto has his house in Laurel Canyon right now. Like he bought a house there. A lot that, of people uh, live in Laurel Canyon. It's very populated, of course. But yeah. Yeah. Now, see, me on the other hand, I, I like the Mothman anything to do with the mothman uh men in black aliens uh ghost paranormal activity all of it is in the mothman and like so to me and the fact that we live so close to it yeah that i could actually go there like that's another thing that makes me really into the mothman so 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 what do you think is going on there because not a lot of people talk about the mothman (laughs) that was surprising to me whenever you said that what do you think like what what do you think's going on there? It's it's hard to know. Uh, we interviewed Tanya Derenberger on the show. Uh, she her, her dad was Woody Derenberger, and he was the first person to meet Indrid Cold right before the uh, the whole Mothman thing kicked off. And uh, she seems to think that you know he was he was an alien enemy or or some what what did she call them the others or the inhumans or something to that effect but 
personally, I think the Mothman is just some kind of natural nature's warning device that, uh uh-oh, things are bad, something's going on. And we look at him like he's a scary dude, but I think he's an all right guy. I don't have a problem with the Mothman. Like, I could hang out with the Mothman. I think he'd be okay. Like he's kind of like a warning creature trying to help yeah. people more than like hurt them. Absolutely. I I think if it's more like, like would, the silver server, just it, sort of so just come in to warn everybody. <laughs> Be a herald. Of <laughs> yes, exactly. Herald if people room. if people had instead of running away from him in in abject terror, if they had just stopped to talk to him, maybe the bridge wouldn't have collapsed. That's all I'm saying. Like give the Mothman a chance, and I don't it, think people do. What do you think, Gertie? What do you think is going on with the Mothman? Do you agree? I think he's been around for longer than anybody can fathom. Or maybe like maybe his species or something like that. I like to mm-hmm. subscribe to the notion that Native Americans and, you know, um, the indigenous people. The thunder, yeah, like Thunderbirds. Maybe he was, you know, that's what they interpreted as a Thunderbird in their mm-hmm. stories. See, that that's one thing that's always in- interested me because – Almost every ancient culture has some type of mis- mythical creature. And a lot of times they will all kind of fit the same description and be in totally different parts of the world. And I think that there is a chance that there was just some forgotten species that died off and maybe there's a few of them left around. I mean, who knows? That There's been all types of human beings throughout history. Maybe it's just one of our off brands you know yeah (laughs) Yeah. well i mean you have to think about how many things that are out there that we have no knowledge of right now i mean they're they're finding new species of animals in the uh amazon like on a daily basis uh what's underwater we i mean yeah that's what i was gonna say we only know down so far so yeah i think it's very possible that there are these things out there um I was kind of being jokey when I was talking about the Mothman, but I, I honestly, that's the one thing that intrigues <laughs> me about that. No, I mean, that, that is my favorite, but I really just don't know where it comes from. And I like that. That's the mystery is what I like. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, is it something, was it real? Uh, and then the men in black, you know, the, the men in black stories that come from there. Uh, that might be, you know, the thing. Who that are they? Really, who are they? Why who are, are they, they affiliated here? with? Who are they affiliated with? <laughs> Why yeah. do they make this look good? You know, like that yeah. kind of stuff with the men in black. I don't know. It's just. It, it's, that's... I mean, who knows what's going on there? Because, of course, we know that secret organizations like that exist. It's right. been well documented throughout the years. And even the government has released a lot of stuff. Not everything. But, I mean, Project Blue Book is a great example of secret government organizations that were actually working to kind of figure out the alien situation yes so i mean they're not going to make all of that for no reason just for the hell of it like how we have space force right now whenever that was announced a few years ago everybody thought it was a joke and 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 i get how you can make jokes from it but i didn't i didn't look at it that way when i was first announced i'm like why do we need that what do they know that we don't know, you know? I mean, Reagan was making a space laser, you know. Yeah. What What Star do they know? Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> what do they know that we don't, you know, and why is that need there? Yeah, and, and I mean, there is, for some reason, but they're not telling anybody about it. And that just really freaks me out. Because I just, if we do ever make contact with aliens i don't know if it's going to go so good that, that that's that's one thing that me and uh goose and justin were talking about the other day like you have to get the right person to make the contact you know like maybe we were talking about like dwayne the rock johnson or like just kind of joking around like that but really i mean i, I don't even know how you would approach that situation I mean, what could you do? Could you imagine what would happen? Like, uh, we go back to the War of the Worlds, you know, Orson Welles and, like, when he was talking about, I mean, would society break down? Are we to that point? And I used to think we would. I used to think that if if an alien spaceship ever landed on the White House lawn, 
it would just be pandemonium. But now, after they released all that documentation saying that there are UFOs and there's stuff out there that the American government can't tell you what it is, and people just, whatever, you know, like, yeah. big deal. Now, I don't know. I don't think anyone would care. I think, like, I'm, it's well, sad. But they but would I, care for like a week, and then yeah. it's just all going to get swept under the rug. That's usually yeah. how it goes. And then, and then Kanye West would drop a new album, and it's off the news cycle. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, yeah. it's one of those things where, you know, we they get a new. They attempted soft disclosure, what, it's been like a month or two ago, wasn't it? When was yeah. that? Yeah. Um, with the, pretty much. That's what they were doing, but it just wasn't overtly. With, with the Tic Tac UFO videos and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and that was really weird. Like, I am so 50 50 whenever I see some, whenever I see footage being released, especially nowadays, because people can just doctor anything. And yep. some of the stuff that I see, like, I can obviously tell it's fake, but you have so many other people that will believe it. So I just like, I'm, I'm very, very, very skeptical whenever I see video footage being released. I was even like skeptical whenever the government was like, Oh, we don't know what these are. I'm like, if you're working on some secret technology, of course, that's what you're going to say. But whenever I seen that, uh, the, the, was it the Tic Tac UFO that was rotating or is that the other one? That it was it was in with those videos. I don't know exactly what they call that one, but it was released yeah. at the same time. This looks yeah. like a top. Yeah, that yeah, that, that that's what I thought. It kind of looked like it. Well, Good. we were talking about this on the other <laughs> podcast with Goose and uh, Justin. You remember the uh, the Acorn UFOs that they talked about in the early 1900s? Yeah, in Kicksburg and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, all that. Yeah, I thought that that one rotating one kind of had an acorn shape. And I was thinking, like, maybe they got it figured out. And that was one you just – I couldn't wrap my mind around it. Like, how does a craft rotate with no visible propulsion system? So, like, I, I'm very 50 Or drag or anything like that. Yeah, there was nothing. <laughs> and it was going so fast. Like, like our the pilots were having a very hard time keeping up with it. Yeah. So, like, like I said, I'm 50-50, but that right there, it's hard to explain that. And uh, it's, it's, it goes against everything I like to talk about, but I sometimes think that, you know, it probably is our government with something new. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not, I don't always jump for the, oh no, it's aliens kind of thing. I will. I will do that. She, yes, Gertie does, but <laughs> not me. I always think that it's something that, you know, the government's got out there and what better way to hide that than to just, you know, I perpetuate the ideal that there is, you know, UFOs, aliens, or whatever out there. It's harder and harder to hide stuff. Everybody has a camera in their, you know, pocket. Everybody has a camera in their hand at all times, usually. So let's let's say that there are UFOs, and now, you know, you don't question why there's a acorn shaped, you know, new piece of technology in the sky above your house. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't know. It's, it, but this is why I love podcasts. This is why I love uh, what Goose and, and uh, Here to Chew Bubblegum does, what we do, is that we can get on and talk about all this stuff, and you don't really have to hide it anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. A lot of times, people were just embarrassed to talk about this stuff, but now you can talk about it and bring up as many ideals and thoughts about it as you want to, and have fun with the ideals you know what i'm yeah. saying like it, it's not something that necessarily you have to keep quiet anymore yeah and, and i think that it's only been the last few years that that was a thing and I, I think that if it wasn't for the ufo situation that's going on right now with the navy well, it was like navy and air force i think both of those branches those are the ones that released the videos yeah but it, but if it wasn't for those videos being released and also the jeffrey epstein situation I don't know if like you would ha if conspiracy theorist would have this much backing right now because like those were the two ultimate I told you so's. If you would have talked about any either of these situations just ten years ago, people like are you crazy? The the Air Force is going to release UFO videos and say that they don't know what they are, or there's a guy who's a pedophile that is interconnected with all the top government people and he has a secret island 
people it'll throw you in the loony bin but no yeah. that's exactly what's been going on and so, i mean it can be used for good and it can be used for evil too we've so, we've seen how you know we can take conspiracy thought and use it on the far extreme of what it should be used for you know and yeah. and that's what that's the only thing that worries me about it but you're absolutely right the epstein the epstein stuff man that like if that doesn't tell you there's something out there somewhere going on at yeah. high levels of government i don't know what will see I, i've always been a big occult person I, i'm not going to get into this because I, i've dove down this rabbit hole so many times and i've talked about this so much but i'll mention it just in case people haven't watched the other podcasts but bohemian grove to everybody oh, yeah. out there go down that rabbit hole see i i I'm I'm 50-50 whenever it comes to conspiracy theories. You have to have some really hard evidence for me to be like, okay, there may be something there. If you just show me a random video, that, that's not going to make me believe. But whenever I learned about Bohemian Grove, I'm like, mm, why is nobody talking about this? The only good thing that Alex Jones ever did, in my opinion, was when he invaded <laughs> Bohemian Grove. That, that man got a lot wrong, like a lot. But yeah. but he also got a lot of stuff right, like the gay frogs. I'm not going <laughs> to go go down that rabbit hole either. But people can just look into both of those things, and wow, just crazy, crazy. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Build a and I mean, New build a bird. Yeah. New world order and all that stuff too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's you know, it, it, the the truth is out there. But I think that a lot of people though just. They don't want to think about it. They, they want to feel safe. They yeah. don't want to believe that our government or these people in these high powers will do these terrible things. They don't want to think about that. But that's exactly what they're doing. I, I do think, though, to anybody like that's interested in conspiracy theories and just going down these rabbit holes of these crazy subjects, you also need to do it in moderation, too. Yes. But, yes. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> yes. I've I've watched a lot of my friends just be drove crazy by it, and then yeah. they start thinking the Earth is flat and yada yada yada. <sighs> I've had I've There's had a many. Drop off after yes. <laughs> yeah. The, well, apparently we're, we're surrounded by ice. 1985. This is a tangent. <laughs> 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 and you know, maybe, maybe I don't know everything. We it, it may be a flat Earth, but I just. I don't know. Who knows? I, but, <laughs> you know, and that's the other thing. Like, you have to keep science in mind when we talk about this stuff. You know, like, lots of people don't. We, we just believe everything we read. Yeah, and, and so many people will just jump down those rabbit holes. I'm trying to give myself a little bit more lighting. I feel like I'm just fading into darkness over here. <laughs> But, you know, uh, and, and, that, and that's something that I think happened a lot with the, the QAnon stuff, too. I think that everything has a little bit of truth in it. But I do also think that stuff can just be overthought and misinformation gets in and then it messes up everything. But there's always a little bit of truth in all of it. And you, you, you just have to be really careful and, like, you know, it, everybody's looking for something, and it's just, it, it worries Sensation me. Sensation is very powerful. It's a very yeah. powerful thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So, so to everybody out there, just be careful. And what a time to be alive for conspiracy theories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember last year. You ever seen that thing on uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia where Charlie has, he's all crazy with the, Built with the board behind him. Pepe he's got, yeah, he's got the yarn. Pepe Sylvia. Yeah, Pepe Sylvia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, the meme said, like, this year's pretty crazy. Check on your conspiracy theory friends. Because last <laughs> year was just wild. That, yep. that that's, It kind of sucked me back into it, though. And whenever I met Goose, yeah, that just sealed the deal for me, too. Because even, even around here, you have a lot of people that will still kind of think you're crazy or it's yeah the devil or whatever Go goose is a gateway drug i'm, I'm just gonna say it like here to chew bubblegum like when you listen and watch uh, you know his his content he he brings up really good points and justin you know that that justin is the uh mind of reason 
when it comes to that stuff. So, like, you've got Goose that takes you up to the mountaintop and Justin that brings you away from the edge. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's a good way to sum it up. And, and that's and I think that's needed. You know, I, I, we need to think about everything. We need to question stuff. But we have to be careful not to let it uh, take over our lives and, and just, you know, lead us down wrong paths. Yeah. I, I love the old saying of be open-minded, but don't be so open-minded that your that brain, your brain falls, falls out. out. Yeah. Yep. yeah, It's absolutely right. I love that saying because I mean, yeah, you, you do got to be careful, but like I said, I love it whenever there's a little bit of truth and I do love stuff that we can't understand. Like whenever it comes to like spirits, ghosts, other dimensions, that stuff that science is caught up with it a little bit to study but we're, we still got a little bit of a ways to go, but there, there's still so much mystery in that, that it's still kind of a who knows scenario. It well, makes I me mean, think of, you know, uh, one of my favorite, like parallel on, you know, conspiracies, consistencies, inconsistency. I don't know exactly, but um, Alistair Crowley, his, you know, his, um, what was it? His guardian angel. Mm-hmm. He drew it on his deathbed. What did it look like? gray alien yep it's crazy well it's it's, i read a i read a quote the other day that said something along the lines of uh today's science would have been yesterday's magic you know like yeah things that we know today if you if you mentioned it or talked about it or or produced it in the 1800s 1700s you would have been locked away or burned at the stake you know like yeah it's true it's just yeah it's just there's things out there that we don't understand yet and and i think that's that's what we have to get and i'm sure there's things out there that we're not supposed to ever understand you know like (laughs) we probably never will but it's fun to try (laughs) i guess is what i'm going for do you uh do y'all believe in like ghosts spirits you know in in another another world another dimension yeah i believe i believe in ghosts for sure um from personal experiences um other dimensions yeah the science is leaning that way isn't it like isn't that what we're we're looking at now and uh uh, what that means i don't know i and even when i try to read the science i'm just like what is this talking about i don't (laughs) yeah they use way too many big words i try to read read about it too i'm like (laughs) it's kind of like on the office explain this to me like i'm five (laughs) <laughs> exactly and, and just like quantum physics and all this i mean it sounds great <laughs> like, i'm sure it, i'm sure it's awesome but i don't know i mean i think that that stuff is out there um i'm a little i'm a little iffy on aliens you know like i i, I think this i think this universe is just way too big to say that we're the only living yeah. you know stuff out there uh, whether that's you know bacteria sized stuff or or full grown you know alien entities, I'm not sure. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I but ghosts. Yeah, I've I've experienced stuff that led me down that path. So, what about you, Gertie? I believe in all of it. I'm open minded. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 how uh, Ellie? You just mentioned that you had an experience there. Have y'all both had kind of a another? Like, like a ghost spirit type experience in your life? Tell him the story, Gertie. Well, the, well, I don't even know if that's what it was, but it was very odd. I, I mean, but it's we, an experience, though. <laughs> years ago, we traveled to Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Yeah. And uh, we were doing a uh, a tour. It was a guided tour. It was an overnight thing. And uh, I was kind of hanging back in a room, taking some pictures of course, you have the tour guide, and then you have the guy that in the back of the tour group that kind of shuffles everybody along so you don't get lost. Of mm-hmm. course. And um, Elliot and that guy were talking, and I was kind of hanging out in the room taking some pictures. And I turn around, and across the hallway from me is this um, stairway that's got the door shut, but it's an old door and the glass is broken out. And I look through it, and I see a uh, older man. I see white hair, the back of his head. And he disappears around the corner inside the stairwell and i'm like oh is there people over here so i kind of catch up with them like is there a person supposed to be here other than us like what what's the deal here and they're like no there should be nobody else on this floor i'm like is there somebody else like checking stuff out like in the stairwells or 
no, there shouldn't be. I can check, but I don't think there is. I'm like, well, I just saw a man walk around <laughs> in the stairwell. This was in the daylight, so. Whoa. But, uh, and, of course, there are the plasters falling off the ceiling, and you make a sound if you, you know, early yeah. step. You crack and crunch and shuffle your feet. Did you kind of have, I like, a, anything. did you have, like, a like? did it give you a feeling, some type of energy? Did you feel any type of vibe from, like, that the room that he was in or just being near that or just confusion i guess at the time you know just just feeling just odd and then just like did i see that you know and then yeah. i don't know if it's a, like a you know mechanism for my brain to try to you know self-preservation to be like was that it i don't think that's anything that's not anything but mm. just just compartmentalize she, she always <laughs> she always leaves out the fact that later on the tour guide Describe that same person as something that people see in the in the building. They said it could overnight. be there was a, there was a homeless gentleman that unfortunately passed away with his dog inside. Mm. That people think they see, so they're like, maybe it was him. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> I just wonder why. Like, I, I mean, I, I don't dismiss it because I, I'm the same way. I'm open minded. Like, I, I hate how people can just jump straight to the conclusion of that's not real. Because you don't know, like people have been proven wrong over and over again throughout history. Just because there's something that we can't explain right now doesn't necessarily mean that it's not real, you know. So, so, so I don't put, I don't, I don't put it past ghosts being real. I just wonder, like, why they stick around. I mean, they've been talked about for thousands of years now. People having some type of paranormal experience. But I just wonder what keeps that energy or that spirit here on earth. I just, that, that's the one part that I can't understand whenever it comes to ghosts. And, that, and that's, yeah, I, I agree There's with that. There's that poetic, that's, like, unfinished business thing, but, you know, and that's not everybody. That can't be every, yeah. every and, encounter. But even then, like, like, it, like some kind of a, a, a record that's playing over and over again that you disrupt somehow, you know? That's that, what uh, Ellie yeah, is at limestone and stuff like that, which you know, yeah, we didn't touch. We have, yeah, we have a lot of deposits around here. That's my theory. We have a lot of, a lot is, of uh, problems. <laughs> I, I think, I think ghosts are one of two things. I think it's um, a residual haunting, like one of the things where you just see things over and over again. You know, like you don't really interact, but you can see it happening. Mm -hmm. Or it's some kind of demonic entity you know like I, I don't really know how else to explain that something well, you that subscribe to that if it's intelligent you feel like it may be demonic right yeah, yeah i feel like yeah because if it's answering you and trying to get you to do things or yeah, yeah interacting I, more than just that that's type my of other play and way yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's my theory on it but i mean of course i'm probably wrong you know and uh I mean, like, really, who knows? Because, like, that's one of the ultimate guessing games right there that science has not caught up with. That's why the whole theory of ghosts has always intrigued me because that's something we still can't explain. But as you were talking about earlier, you know, the, the science is kind of going towards that, hey, other dimensions might exist. And to me, that would be what would open up the door for spirits and ghosts to exist if, if other dimensions exist i don't know I, i'm too stupid to understand it but maybe I, I don't know if there's other dimensions there has to be something in it you would think right and like it's that plausible. you know <clears throat> i have a friend that is online that has a uh, big theory about that's why it's so hard to find uh bigfoot or you know all these cryptids is maybe they're not here they're just when you see them they're visiting and mm -hmm. there's some kind of way that they go back and forth between the dimensions is that possible i don't know i you know i'm not a scientist uh i and even if i was i, I probably wouldn't be researching bigfoot physics but all i'm saying is that you know that is out there and that's that's a possibility and I think we're way too quick to dismiss stuff like that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, whenever it comes to everything. That's why I say I can't stand people that just jump the gun and it's like, oh, they don't exist. So, I, I, okay, Bill, you're, I bet you'd be real fun at a party. I, I just can't stand those types of people. And 
I, I just can't wait to see what type of science and technology that we're capable of in a hundred years from now, because I mean, like a hundred years ago was 1921. That was like Peaky Blinders era. You, you, you had the, the car, you, you had factories, stuff like that, train. I'm trying to think, like, well, I guess the airplane was just getting going at the time. You had crappy phones. What well, didn't have a lot going on. Now in 1921, when it comes to a cell phone, I can FaceTime with somebody who's in a totally different country. We've been to the moon and to Mars and just doing all this crazy stuff. That's just a hundred years later. And like how advanced we are now. Imagine what the next hundred years is going to be like. Uh, and, and, and we can't either because like I, I would have never predicted the internet or zoom or any of this stuff. It, it couldn't have been predicted, but this is where we're at. Who knows what's going on? Yeah, if it makes you feel any better, we're closer to 2050 than we are 1990. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we're, it's it's always leading. And if, if Back to the Future was made today, instead of going back to 1955, if we did the same amount of years, we would go back to 1991. How crazy is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, how insane. And just the fact that we have come leaps and bounds in our technology. You know, uh, it's... Like I, like I was saying a few minutes ago, everybody's got a camera in their pocket. You know, that that phone, there's a great, you were talking about memes. There was a great picture online the other day that had a guy in the 80s who had like a, a, a tape recorder, a, a video camera. Uh, like he had all of this equipment around him. And you can do all of that with your cell phone now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's, it's ridiculous. It's, and where are we going to be? you know, in the next couple of years, uh, it's just Amazon is selling a robot that can do things in your house. You know, like it, it will go around and do chores while you're gone and you can contact it and be like, go to the bathroom, show me the bathroom. And like it, while you're like a state away and it will drive itself to your bathroom because it maps out your house and like, you know, like wait 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 so, so so is this like a like r2d2 size or roomba size it's it's a little it's a little bit in between both it's 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 on amazon you can go on amazon and look now they're also selling like home security drones that you can put inside your house and like if you want to see what's going on inside your house you can contact it the drone will take off and fly through your house and then come back and dock and like you can see live video while it's going on like Whoa. even even five years ago who's thinking about that you know what i'm saying who's thinking about that stuff and now it's a reality can it just call 911 yeah like if if it's something's so yeah like you can program it to do all kinds of stuff like that that's it's, crazy it's yeah it's it's going to get to a point i think where we're, we're not going to have to work we're not going to have to do society. It's going to change. I don't, I don't know if it's going to, I don't know if it's going to be stable. I don't know if it's going to crumble, but with, with how advanced we are getting with technology, I mean, they're going to have to figure out something because yeah. where does that leave us? Who knows? Well, I don't know. I can see that being a good thing and a bad thing for some people. They won't have a sense of purpose but also it might free us from 40 hour work weeks to do better stuff with life. It could go either way, but it's going to be a really big change that is going to be hard to deal with because I mean, I, it just, I don't see this lasting forever, this type of life that we're living. And I don't know how in the world they're going to make that transition peacefully. Yeah, I mean, especially when you start talking about artificial intelligence, you know, and you start talking about all of these, uh, you know, I hate to say Terminator, Skynet, you know, that kind of stuff, but that is a possibility. You know, scientists warn of that, you know, be careful what you're doing with AI. I read an interview uh, with somebody who worked at Google that quit. And when they asked him why, they said, because I really think they're trying to make God, make a God with AI. And 
you know, I, now I don't subscribe to that. People out there listening to this interview, I'm not saying that that's true. I'm just saying that's what he said. There, and, there is a religion called Googleism, by the way. Yeah, I know. And like, yeah. at, at this point, oh. like, what kind of crazy things are still out there? You know, like where, what is our next big? You know, we uh, mankind has always had a purpose, whether it was exploring the unknown, uh, creating something new. Well, what happens when we we do that? You know, what's yeah. next? And that's that's strange to even think about. I'm I'm just scared that one day somebody's going to press the button. There's the button to make the black hole, or to jump into the different dimension, or whatever. There's going to be somebody who has the guts to do it one day. <laughs> and like, it's already turned on in Switzerland, if you <laughs> subscribe to that theory. Yeah. The yeah. CERN, Are you talking uh, about the, uh, what's uh, that thing super called? Super Collider. Yeah. The CERN Super Collider. <laughs> I've watched a bunch yeah. of videos with that, and I'm too dumb to understand it. Exactly. exactly. And, and like, what do we do? You know, and like, of course, then you have the theories of the, uh, what are they called? The uh, Mandela effects. And uh, is that what's causing that? And, you know, I don't know. It's Bernstein I, bears, Bernstein bears. Yep. Yeah. It, well, I learned a new one whenever, see, I didn't know about, well, I knew about the Mandela effect. I learned about it a little bit, but there's going to be a podcast released uh, the week after this one where we mentioned that. And I learned, okay, whenever it comes to Disney, do y'all remember like Tinkerbell coming out of the castle and hitting the like wand and it says like, I guess it says Disney or like that. Do you the fireworks. That? Yeah. yeah. Apparently that never happened. Yeah. I, I've seen that. Yeah. Well, and let like, me ask you. I, I YouTubed it. It's not out there. So Messing. one that gets me is uh, stovetop stuffing. Okay. Yeah. Who who makes stovetop stuffing? Jiffy, I thought like I don't, what's that one brand? I don't eat stovetop stuffing a lot. I don't eat, but like Stouffer's, right? You always heard Stouffer's stovetop stuffing, right? Yeah. That's the like, and there's there's interviews with like, uh, you can see uh, what's the guy King of Queens? What's his name? Kevin, oh, Kevin James. Kevin, Kevin James, James. Yes. He he's talking to uh. uh Stephen Colbert, and he's like, yeah, mom always took that Stouffer's stovetop stuffing and all this stuff. It was never Stouffer's, ever. That was never mentioned, but I have distinct memories of it being called Stouffer's stovetop stuffing, you know, ever since I was little. And That's like, weird. then you have the, speaking of Disney, uh, mirror, mirror on the wall. Okay. She never said mirror, mirror on the wall. It was magic mirror on the wall. Bull. Like, no, oh, I'm I'm telling you, go look it up. I I I, I know I, I seen that too, but see that that's what I'm. Whenever it comes to different dimensions and stuff like that, the, the science goes there and I guess proves it. I, I don't know. I, I'll take their word for it, but stuff like that would kind of explain it a little bit. A little or, bit, right? Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> who knows? Just that many people can't be wrong. I can get it like there's somebody naked in the middle of the road saying that the that the sky is pink and the grass is orange. Like I can get how somebody can think one person can think some crazy stuff like that. But whenever it comes to these crazy things that we're talking about, you you have thousands, probably millions of people that remember Tinkerbell or remember Stouffer's stove top Stouffer. stuffing. That's, yes. a, that's a tongue twister out right there. Right. But, but like, I mean, you have potentially thousands, millions of people that remember that. How can that many people be wrong? Yeah, I don't remember Nelson Mandela dying in prison. You know, like that, that memory has never happened for me. But there are hundreds of thousands of people who remember it like it was yesterday. You know what I mean? Like, remember that. Um, the Shaz or the, what is it? The Kazam oh, the or the yeah, the mm -hmm. the genie movie, whatever. Like yeah, Sinbad was the genie. Sinbad yeah. was the yeah. I don't remember it, but there are thousands of people out there who do. I like, remember it. Okay, see, see, it seems like I do too. And the Bearstein Bears thing really messed with me. Yeah, I, I vividly remember that whenever I was a kid. But no, apparently not. And that just who knows? Like 
maybe something happened along the way, like, like the Hadron Collider that – you said it's in Switzerland? Yeah, it's CERN. Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. who who knows? You know, like, and who knows what they're working on that they won't tell us about? And somebody accidentally slips and slaps the button or something like that. Humans <laughs> are stupid. Like, like that 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 can happen. Who knows what's going on? But life is weird, and anything's possible. It's all spooky. Every bit of it. But y'all, hey, thank y'all for coming on the podcast. I had a blast talking with y'all. I, I'm, some of my friends try to make too much sense of anything, so I love going down the rabbit hole like this. That's Yeah, that's us. I mean, there's a time to be serious and a time to be, you know, straightforward. But then there's a time to have fun and talk about these things, you know. Like, that's what we like to do, so. But yeah, thank I, I, I love how, like, whenever I listen to y'all, y'all talk about, like, murderers and just all these, like, evil things going on in the world. But you, you make it so fun and, and like, <laughs> and, and so light. Like, how you, what, what's your motto? Like, you bring dark. A lighter, a lighter look to a darker side of the world. Yeah. yeah. It's a perfect way to sum it up. Uh, like, it's, it's a beautiful thing that y'all do because I think that sometimes, like, people can just get too gruesome and take things too seriously. But it's good yeah. to find I, I think comedy exists in some of the most horrific things you can imagine. There's still some comedy in there. And I'm glad that y'all find that. Well, thank you. And listen, we a hundred percent thank you for letting us be on the show. Uh we love it. Like I said, you're you're the master. You know, like like we just no. we just appreciate us you you letting us be here. Thank you so much. And for everybody that wants to uh, check out all of y'all's endeavors, tell everybody where they can catch everything spooky. Uh, we're on Apple Podcasts, Google Plus, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Anchor. Uh, all you got to, and we have our own website, spookyfamilypodcast.com. You can go on there. We have links to everything. We have links to all of our other buddies' shows on there. We're going to put one up for you. We've got one for uh, Here to Chew Bubblegum, Paranormal Trucker, uh, Mountain Mysteries with Chris Sloan. We have, you know, all that stuff. Because we, that's the other thing. We want to make Eastern Kentucky, you know, podcast central and we've got so many good podcasts here and we just want to promote all of that you know what i'm saying and like it's just fun it's just fun to be around your friends and talk crazy stuff so it's it's also good to be around people that understand this not yes. that many people understand I, like you just oh you sit in front of a computer and talk on a microphone about government conspiracy like what what <laughs> but they, they, they don't understand it but it's, so that's another reason why we need to stick together because there's exactly. not many of our kind out there. Exactly, exactly. But I agree Grady 100%. and Elliot, thank you so much. I, I really did have a blast with this. And anytime that y'all want to do this again, holler at me and we'll make it happen. Hey, listen, you need to be on the show. We got to get you on. I wish we'd got, I wish we would have got Eli on the show for the tournament. That's what I wish we'd done. Oh, yeah. Like, I was enjoying that so much. Whenever you said the evil queen, though, I thought you were talking about the one in Great Britain, to be honest. Oh. It, 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 took, it took me no, a little while. No, that's the lizard there. queen. That's the lizard queen. <laughs> No, listen, we, we're actually getting ready to finish that up in a couple, a couple of uh, episodes. So keep listening. We're, we're almost to the final four. So I, I, I really am enjoying it. I, I don't, I, you need to like get like a list of all those. Cause I've kind of like got lost in the sauce, but I, but I love just hearing how y'all match up different people and, and I, I play along in my car and also how you do like the poll thing on Spotify yeah that is yeah. cool man i didn't even know that you could do that y'all are doing a lot of innovative stuff with y'all's podcast and yeah. it's cool man kudos to y'all well not not to give anything away but we we actually know who's in the finals we've already we've already recorded that episode we brought all of our guest stars back and we got all the way down to the final four but we know who's in the finals and the finals are going to be picked only by the fans so we're going nice. to put another survey out there we're going to let everybody like choose that and we're going to reveal it on our halloween special which is going to release on halloween day so well folks listen to that gertie elliot thanks again thank you thank you so much